Alright, okay y'all. Hi, hello, welcome to another video. It is Atia of Booking In With Atia, and we are doing something special. <laughs> I love watching when people do like themed reading vlogs where they pick a genre or a concept and they go for it. So I'm going to be doing this thing where I read romance, BIPOC, diverse romance, because I've been, you know, I've been collecting quite a few because they all sound great and the covers are so pretty and they're by authors that I love and authors I haven't tried and blah, 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 blah 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 and now I have a bunch of romance that I need to eventually read so this is part one of me reading BIPOC diverse romance and I have four books that I will be reading in this vlog so we have The Hookup Plan by Farah Roshan, The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest, Not The Plan by Gia D. Cadenet, and The Love Con by Saracia Glass. Now I don't know which one of these I'll be reading first I have a clue because I put on Instagram a poll using just emojis, right? That kind of encapsulated or were the vibes of each of these books and had my followers choose. And so I have about five more hours until that poll closes. But right now, so this is... This was the poll. I'll also put like when once it finishes, I'll put the complete one here. And so right now it looks like the neighbor favor is winning which is super exciting i've read uh oh, what book was it by this author oh huh, okay i know that i owned this book i'm trying to think when i read this i mean i read it a couple years ago it was a young adult book okay well i can't remember the name it was something about going and she was a ballerina i'll put the cover here but so this looks like it's winning i am tempted to start it right now but i also want to you know give people maybe maybe there'll be an influx of votes i don't know we'll see i also want to finish up another book that i another romance that i'm reading before i start reading this one but we'll see how that works i'm just super excited to read this and i I will come back once the poll officially closes to give you the final results of which book I'll be reading first. I'm also going to use that poll. Maybe I won't. Maybe every time I finish a book or I'm about to finish a book, I'll do a new poll with new emojis to choose which book I'll read next. But yeah, this is exciting. All right, y'all. So it is, can you move your butt? <laughs> So it is uh, day one of this, you know, reading romance vlog. Oh my goodness. And true to my, she's headbutting my keyboard, but like every time she does that, it's definitely gonna fall. And true to my prediction, the neighbor favor one. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, let's, let's dive in. What is this about? It is pretty late. So I am gonna read 50 pages of this and then get into bed. All right, so shy, bookish, and admittedly awkward. Lily Green has always felt inadequate compared to the rest of her accomplished family who strive for black excellence. She dreams of becoming a children's book editor, but she's been frustratingly stuck in the nonfiction division for years without a promotion in sight. Lily finds escapism in her correspondence with her favorite fantasy author, and what begins as two lonely people connecting over email turns into a tentative friendship and possibly something else Lily won't let herself entertain until he ghosts her without a word. Months later, Lily is still crushed, but she's determined to get a hold of her life, starting with finding a date to her sister's wedding. And the perfect person to help her is Nick Brown, her charming, attractive new neighbor who she feels drawn to for some, for reasons she can't explain. But little does she know, Nick is an author, her favorite fantasy author. Nick, who has his reasons for using a pen name and pushing people away, soon realizes that the beautiful, quiet girl from down the hall is the same Lily he fell in love with over email months ago. Unwilling to complicate things even more between them, he agrees to set her up with someone else though this simple favor between two neighbors is anything but not when he can't get her off his mind okay a little um unrequited slightly unrequited love between two book lovers oh, that's like the perfect way to start up this vlog okay let's get into it i'm gonna read 50 pages and then we're gonna see what it is reading 60 pages and the neighbor favor because it's split into parts so part oh no so part one is like them talking for i want to say maybe like 
eight months over email. Okay, actually, let me double check that. So they start talking via email early May, and they stop talking via email late January. So I was right, seven months. And it's funny. It's really funny. I love the banter, the back and forth. You definitely see that they have a connection, even through email and just getting to know one another. Nick is so self-deprecating. It's like, and I and I get it. Yeah, like he's gonna he's gonna realize that he's worth it, and he's gonna realize that you know he's capable of being loved, and that he has talent, and all this other stuff. But whereas Lily's um, admissions of her own flaws, right? So she's super anxious. She's super shy. And, but the way she talks about herself is very much like, these are just parts of my personality. And because these are parts of my personality, I know that this is just how I deal with the world and how I deal with things. Okay. He's like, yeah, we went on a fictional date. Like we're going to a bookstore and you would get the Dutch version of Ella Enchanted, because that's her favorite book, or was her favorite book as a child. And I would think about getting a Game of Thrones book, but then remember how I tried and failed at being the next George R. R. Martin, and then I wouldn't. <laughs> you girl, what? Like, <laughs> and like the amount of times he's referenced in these emails, like. Oh yeah, I'm fine spending the holidays alone because I'm used to being alone and my boss would give me time off from work, but I wouldn't go see my family anyway. So there's no point in taking a break if I don't need it. In an email? Like you just, <laughs> you're just gonna drop that in an email? And it felt, and I guess because I read it all in one sitting and it does take place over the course of seven months. So I guess, you know, if it's only coming up, you know, five, six, seven times, in the span of seven months and then okay like I guess you know but it, it just it just felt like a lot it really like felt like a lot and it's like I'm, I'm gonna need you to find I need you to get your life I'm really just and that sounds so cold it sounds so not understanding and it sounds so judgmental but I'm hoping that now in this next part which is called real life i'm hoping that because it won't just be emails and we'll get more of them going about their day-to-day -day and him pretending like he doesn't know who she is which is questionable then maybe i i because i don't i don't feel sorry for him right now i'm kind of just like annoyed like we get it you have not dealt with your abandonment issues at your big old age i like i we get it we, I, we get it. <laughs> we get it, you know? Wow, I'm coming off as so cold. Anywho, um, also let's talk about the fact that they talk for seven months and it gets into some like some romantic territory because he gets, he gets a little tipsy on New Year's and he's like, oh, you know, if you were here, because they've been doing this thing where like, if you were here, this is what we would do, da da da. And he's like, oh, we would turn each other and smile and would kiss. And then he apologizes for it. She's like, oh, there's nothing to apologize for. Like, that sounds great. And he tells her that he's like, probably going to end up moving to New York because his book, which went out of print, like, a few months after it was published his book might be being picked up by a big u.s publisher and so his agent has been asking him to move to new york and give the whole writing thing another shot blah 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 so she's like oh my god great you know that's great and he's like you know maybe we'll actually get to meet and she's like cool i've been thinking about like maybe we could meet even if you didn't move to new york and so the whole idea of a facetime situation pops up and he doesn't show up for the agreed upon video chat doesn't say that he's not going to show up doesn't even send an email saying like yeah i'm busy like nothing right she has to send like several emails being like are you okay because he travels for work he travels internationally for work and so he emails her back and is like 
I'm so sorry. I'm not who you thought I was and this can't go on. And she's like, what? Like, you're not the author, da da da. And he deletes, he deletes that email. Like, the email address to the point where it literally is like, oh, it's a delivery status notice, notification failure. Like, I don't know. It's, it's like very, like that, the self deprecating part mixed with the fact that, like, you put all this emotional investment into this virtual relationship and it looks like it can go someplace and you make the first move, right? Because he's the one who first, like, they do like, oh, your ideal date and he's the one who says, like, his ideal date will be with her and like, another country doing this, this, and that. And then again, he says the thing about New Year's. So you are, I don't want to say he was leading her on. But for lack of better words, he was, he was leading her on. And then to ghost her on the video chat, after you tell her that you're probably moving to New York, and then to be like, yeah, I'm not who you thought I was, which is so cryptic. And so just like, like you're an author and you've been penning these long ass emails and you have a way with the words and the most you can say so that it doesn't come across like you catfished her is sorry I'm not who you thought I was. Okay. All right. I, yeah. Okay. I didn't realize I had these feelings until I started talking about it. And that's just me on page 60. That is just me on page 60. He's going to have to do some real work. Some real, like, deep, deep work. And I can already predict what the third act breakup is going to be. Th this is my prediction. It's either going to be... It's not going to be a miscommunication, right? It's going to be him falling in love with her, right? He'll probably fall first. He's going to fall in love with her. And then he's going to be like, ah, you deserve better than me. And end the relationship. That was the third act breakup. Or, or he's going to emotionally withdraw from her because of his own insecurity. And she's going to be like, you know what? I can't do this because you... We go flip-flop back and forth and you don't know what you want or who you are. I'm hoping it's the second one, but I have a feeling it's, it's gonna be the first one. I really do have that feeling. Okay, Nick isn't as annoying because apparently he really likes the fifth season by Nick and K. Jemison, or at least he's read it. And also, I kind of stand Lily. I kind of stand her. Because the fifth season was also her favorite book. And she stood up to her sisters about them constantly trying to set her up on dates. And we're only on page 78. So I'm glad that someone is making progress in this book. Hello. <clears throat> All right. So I'm on page 120. I read 60 pages of this so far today. Maybe I'll read some more tonight. I don't know. We'll see. So we've gotten to the part, or I've just stopped at the part where Nick Nick realizes that his next door neighbor, Lily, is the same Lily that he was emailing for all those months and that he ghosted and kind of insinuated that he was catfishing that entire time. And he just like has fleed her apartment. And I'm interested to see how Christina Forrest plays this, right? Because you go into it, or I came into it, knowing that the power dynamic, not even the power dynamic, but for lack of a better word, the power dynamic was going to be uneven. He knows all this information about her right off the bat because 
they were in this you know, seven month long communication via email. He knows that she's that woman, but she does not know, Lily does not know that the man she is now attracted to, her next door neighbor, is that same man that she fell for over email. So I'm interested to see if it can go two ways. It really can go two ways. You can either have Nick not use this information to his advantage or uses the information to his advantage. And in using that information to his advantage woos her. I'm really hoping that's not the way this is gonna go. I don't know. And we get more of Nick's personality a little bit. I definitely do think we know Lily more even though their age time seems to be equal. I do think that we know Lily more or maybe she's just a stronger character or maybe I just like her more and I find Nick to be um, a coward. That could also be it, so I don't really like him. But I can't even make a judgment call as to whether or not he is so insecure in his ability to show up for someone that he would use the information about Lily to his advantage. To his credit, when he finds out that, or when he realizes, he like runs out of her apartment and I guess she stops him in the hallway because she needs a date to the wedding. But I haven't read that part yet. So stay tuned, stay tuned. I am now on page 133. <sighs> Nick doesn't deserve Lily. <laughs> um, all I can think about every time it's from his perspective, and it's just, like, so we're at the point of the story where his book has now, okay, I'm very hot, so I apologize if you hear that, where his book from, like, five years ago has been picked up by a big publisher, so he has money, like, he got paid a seven-figure check, okay? And they end up in Ikea because she's like, I'll help you furnish your apartment because I'm really good at that. And you just help me get a date. Like you just boost my confidence, you know, I kind of like Hitch from that Will Smith movie. And so he doesn't really agree, but he doesn't disagree. And so they end up in Ikea and she's like, OK, what about this one? What about this one? And they check two. They check and he checks the price tag and he's like, oh, these are too expensive. Like, Dude, you're like, you're wealthy now. I don't understand. What do you mean? His only furniture is a mattress. A mattress that sits on the floor. A mattress. I thought Ikea was the inexpensive option. I really did. But okay, maybe I'm wrong. And then she asks him, Lily asks Nick, she's like, so what's your budget? And in his brain, he's like, free. Free? Free? And then he goes on this story about how when he was in Sweden, he asked one of the Ikea workers if they gave away any of the display furniture for free. And I get it. He's awkward. Well, actually, no, he's not awkward. That's the thing. He's only this weird with her. I don't know. It's a DNF. It is, which is tragic. And it sucks. It really does. It really, 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 really does. But I gave it a hundred and I got a third of the way through. That's what the story graph is telling me. I got a third of the way through the book and all I can think is Lily deserves better, Nick is a loser, Nick is a coward, and I'm just not invested. And it really sucks because this was one of my most anticipated romances. This really has to stop happening. What was another book that I was highly anticipating? Oh, The House of Cotton. Yeah, that was... Anyways. So this will be in my Pango bookshop once I take these tabs out. This will be in my Pango bookshop because it's a no. It's a no. And what's tragic about this, not tragic, but like I don't even know which romance I'm going to pick up next for this vlog because I did not put the poll up because I thought that I'd be finishing the book, but I'm not. I, it's a DNF. It's such a pretty cover though it's so pretty but it ain't for me it ain't for me tragic all right happy saturday i've decided that i'm going to start this one next which is the love con by sarasia glass so i'm going to read you the synopsis all right Sometimes Kenya Davenport believes she was switched at the hospital. How else could a lover of anime, gaming, and cosplay come from STEM parents? 
Still, Kenya dreams of being able to turn her creative hobby into a career. She finally has a chance to make it big when she joins the reality show competition Cosplayer No Way. There's just one catch. The challenge for the final round is all about iconic duos, and the judges want the contestants' significant others to participate. Unfortunately, Kenya is as single as can be at the moment. Luckily, her best friend, Cameron Lassiter, agrees to be her fake boyfriend for the show. Role-playing a couple in love will force them to explore what they're hiding under the mask of friendship. Can Kenya and Cam fake it until she makes it? Or will she be real about her feelings, knowing it could cost her the best friend she's ever had? So yeah, loving... Love this cover. I'm very excited for this one. Very, very excited. Hopefully I have more luck with that one than I did with uh, The Neighbor Faith. All right, so book number two, we have The Love Con by Saracia Glass. And uh, I am going to read the synopsis. Have I read the synopsis already? I can't remember if I've told you all what this is about. I think I have. And if I haven't, then I'll like do a quick clip where I do that. But I am currently on page 17. I read some of it earlier today after I finished another book up and it was during reading sprint. So I was like, I don't want to we had like 15 minutes left of the sprint so I was like you know what let me pick this up I love this cover I adore this cover so much and I love the fact that we have a geeky black girl as one of the main characters who's into cosplay I'm not personally into cosplay like doing cosplay but I love looking at other cosplayers of color like just the imagination and just the creativity of it and i'm i'm very much a nerd like i love all of the superheroes and the i mean i'm doing a whole thing during the month of august where i read comics and manga and i read <laughs> like i play video games i am very much a blurred proud about it in fact so I'm loving that particular representation and I always love a fake dating trope. I really really do. Some of my favorite romances involve a fake dating trope. Of course the only one that's coming to mind right now is Take a Hint Danny. Wow look at that nice stack of books right here. Wish it looked better. Anyways of course the only one that's coming to mind is Take a Hint Danny Brown but I'm sure there's some other ones where there's fake dating. Oh Honey and Spice has fake dating and that's a favorite of mine also the unhoneymooners by christina lauren fake dating a favorite and that's it i mean not that's not like that's it but those are just three that come to mind was that three yeah that was three that come to mind that have fake dating and i really enjoyed i need to cut the tag out of this shirt because every single time that i wear it it's a pajama shirt which i guess is why i don't do it because like, it's not like I'm outside and it's bothering me, but every single time I'm wearing it, I'm like, this tag is annoying. But yeah, so that's really just, those are the vibes so far. But this cover, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this cover. So as we can see, this is an interracial romance. We have a black woman protagonist and a white guy. And they're best friends. And they both love cosplay. So, love that for them. All right, so I am 70%, oh no, 70 of the way through the Love Con, and I am loving it. I am loving it. It is, I mean, first of all, I'm surprised that I'm reading it so quickly. It just pulls you in and keeps you going and doesn't let you go. I'm on page 212 out of, let's see out of 302 so what that's like nine, that's 90 pages i have 90 pages left i might honestly find some reading sprints and just knock this out we'll see but ugh, it's so good i love their friendship and like i said before friends to lovers is one of my favorite tropes but their relationship their friendship just feels so natural so for them to slip into this fake dating situation it felt seamless because they were already so playful they were already so loving towards one another and they're not afraid to show affection because they they've been best friends since either middle school or high school it might have been middle school and 
it's just it's it's great it's great <laughs> it's incredible i love it something monstrous would have to happen in the last 90 pages for this to be anything less than a four star and honestly it is leaning towards four and a half five stars i'm having a blast i'm having an absolute blast whatever this author puts out next i will definitely be reading so because i am 70 percent of the way through last night I put a poll up on Instagram using emojis to have people pick which one I would read next, either the hookup plan or not the plan, which is so funny that they have both a plan in the title. And so far with 18 hours, or actually I should say with six hours left in the poll, this is what we're looking at. So the top one is the hookup plan and the bottom one is not the plan. And it looks like the hookup plan is winning i'm gonna give it it's 9 54 right now so i'll give it until midnight and then i'll see if the hookup plan is still winning but yeah those those are the vibes i initially was feeling a little guilty that i dnf the neighbor favor and if you're someone who dnfs tell me if this is something that you deal with where you dnf a book and you're like uh oh, should i dnf it like maybe you got better da, 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 blah 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 and then you read a book right after it that is just absolutely incredible and you're like yeah i, I no longer feel guilty about dnfing the neighbor favor it wasn't for me it was not for me so once this vlog project is done the neighbor favor will be up in my bingo books shop <laughs> by the time you see this it probably will already be there but yeah it, it's it's a good time it's a really good time <sighs> this was fantastic i finished this last night five stars i mean it was just it was so great the banter the friendship that blossoms into more how protective cam is over kenya and what i really appreciated is that the people in so cam's ex but also kenya's parent think that kenya has a tendency to i don't want to say use but lean on cam too much and rely on him too much and that like she's using him and all this other stuff and sorry there's something on the camera lens and that like she basically even her parents are basically like what are you bringing to this relationship and i loved how one we did not have a third act breakup so like <laughs> thank you they had a, a road bump but they were able to talk it out like adults right and but i loved how cam was like you do like this is even we support each other in different ways i would not have opened up my shop if it were not for you i would not have made it through college if it were not for you i would not have made it through the death of my father if not for you and so while and i guess it speaks to how, what you quantify as support right so kenya thinks of support or she did think of support as being um, monetary as being something tangible right because like she works for him she has a job with him he's helping her with the cosplay competition but ham sees her intangible support her emotional support that she gives him as being equal if not better than the physical or tangible support that kenya gives to him and i just loved it it was it was brilliant it was absolutely brilliant i i really enjoyed this one i really did and i highly recommend that you pick this up if you like romance if you like cosplay if you like just nerdy things and geeking out and it's really cute it does it's steamy and that the pining that they do can get pretty steamy but for the most part, it's pretty closed door in terms of the sex. But that doesn't take away from like the steaminess and the passion that's in this book. The book I'm going to head to next for this project is The Hookup Plan by Farah Roshan. This is the third book in, I don't know what this series is called. I've read the other two. Yeah. but the first book is the boyfriend project and the dating playbook these are technically within the same world within the same series but they can be read as standalones the through point is that all three female leads in the first book you learn that they were simultaneously dating the same guy without knowing and that's not a spoiler that literally like is in the blurb of the first book and they all find out and they confront him and it goes viral or whatever but they decide to take it in stride and they actually become best friends so this is following of course one of the best friends and it says she's got close friends and an even closer enemy 
Successful pediatric surgeon London Kelly just needs to find some balance and de-stress. According to her friends Samaya and Taylor, what London really needs is a casual hookup, a night of fun with no strings. But no one, least of all London, expected it to go down, expected it to go down at her high school reunion with Drew Sullivan, millionaire, owner of delicious abs, and oh yes, her arch nemesis. Now London is certain the road to hell is paved with good sex because she's found out the real reason Drew's back in Austin to decide whether her beloved hospital remains open. First, Drew is doing everything he can to show her that he's a decent guy who actually cares, but London's not falling for it because while sleeping with the enemy is one thing, falling for him is definitely not part of the plan. <laughs> Okay, I wonder if this is actually enemy to lovers. I think it probably is because it says her arch nemesis and they reconnect at a high school reunion. So they probably hated each other in high school <laughs> for some reason. But this is just a little thickums, you know, a little thick. Uh, we have how many pages? Oh, coming summer of 2023, pardon my Frenchie. How have I not heard about that? Anyways, uh, this is 384 pages. So close to 400 pages. This is the next one. Already got the little tabbies ready. I do need to go through and annotate this one because I read pretty much most of it as like on I, for most of this book I read it as an ebook so I need to go through and get all my annotations and underlining and things like that. So I'm going to put on some YouTube and do that. Really good like writing for a thriller and she actually just came out with a New book, I saw it in the new thriller section. So I'm going through and I'm annotating this and there's just so many quotes that made me swoon. So she's like, Kenya's having this, I guess we can call it a breakdown, but she's having some doubts about um, being in the competition and whatever. And she says to Cam, I'm okay. And his response is, no, you're not. And that's okay. And it's just, it's so simple, but it's just like, <laughs> and then later on in the same moment, he says, you don't want to be the angry black woman, I get that, but you don't have to be the strong black woman either. You need to take a break before this breaks you. And it's just, he gets her, he gets her and he's there and it's great. So I'm putting in, or I'm updating my reading spreadsheet, and one of the categories that I have, or one of the things that I track is whether or not an author is a debut author. So I just checked to see if Ceresia Glass, who wrote The Love Con, has written anything else. And it turns out she has. Like, she's written a fantasy romance. I think. Yeah, I think that has demons or something or immortals. So I am about to just, you know, go on over to a uh, good old Kindle and see what that is about. Let's see, Ceresia. So this is, it's a three book series. I don't know if it follows the same couple or not, but yeah, right now it is 99 cent. How many pages? Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice amount of pages. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, you know, click the buy now button since it's only 99 cents. <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely check out this series. I want to see if the second book, yep, is, it follows the same girl. That's cool. Okay, so I started this last night and I am on page 78, really enjoying it so far. I can already tell there's going to be a lot of character work because it's very clear that um, London has a lot of unresolved issues dealing with her father and those unresolved issues are have bled into how she perceives and perceived Drew during high school. And then in terms of Drew, that is his name, right? Yeah. Drew, his mother passed a year ago and it seems that he has not fully dealt with that. So, and I say that because his, he calls his uncle, who he's very close to, 
And the uncle's like, hey, it's been a year. You need to go clean out your mother's house. You can't just let it sit there. And Drew's like, I have all intentions of letting it sit there. So there's definitely some unresolved issues surrounding their parental units that are going to be explored. But I'm really enjoying it so far. I forgot how much I loved the friendship between Samaya, Taylor, and London, and just how prevalent that friendship is in each of these books. Like it was the same way with the Boyfriend Project when they first become a friend group. And it was the same way in the Dating Playbook, which was Taylor's story. And already it's, I can tell that Samaya and Taylor are going to be very prevalent characters. Like I just, I don't know. I love when you have a romance book that also features a heavy, not a heavy, but like a very strong friend group for their main characters. I'm wondering if we're going to see any of Drew's friends or if he has any friends because the only person that's mentioned as him being close to is his uncle. So we'll see. We will see. It's a thick one, but it's reading very, very quickly. All right, so let's talk about the hookup plan. I'm thoroughly enjoying this book. I read like 90 pages last night before going to sleep. I'm on page, okay, maybe a little more like 80. I'm on page 156. And what I'm really enjoying is just how much character work is going into London and Drew. And it's so interesting because London has acknowledged at least twice that her high school and her current apprehension towards him is rooted in her basically, I don't want to say non-existent relationship with her father because he is in her life. Like he didn't abandon her and her mom, but he was just not an attentive father. He was not an affectionate father. And she was always trying to be the best in school so that he had something to brag about. And Drew threatened that because he was also just as brilliant. And so that's just interesting. And I know that she's going to have to reckon with that. And every time the thought comes up, she's always like, oh, like, I don't even have to deal with that. I don't have to untangle my warped feelings about drew from my very valid feelings about my father because this is only temporary this is only temporary which isn't the best fix because those issues can and definitely do manifest in other ways and so if you're not dealing with it because right now it's tied to drew then you'll never deal with it in life and drew well, I mean, we're halfway through and Drew, Drew is already like, I want something more. Not to lend him, but he's like, just hooking up is not satisfying him because he does want some kind of emotional relationship with her, even though he's only set to be in Austin for like less than a month and he's going back to New York. What I also realized while reading is that Farah Roshan loves a workplace romance <laughs> because in The Boyfriend Project, they are colleagues of some sort i think i forget what samaya's job is in the boyfriend project it's something tech related and i think the uh i'm forgetting the the her love interest name but i believe he's either in the it department or he was brought in or something like that so that like they were not directly colleagues but they did work in the same facility for some time and then with the dating playbook the main girl in that, Taylor, becomes the personal trainer of the main guy, whose name I also forgot. <laughs> I guess because, like, they, they're only mentioned in their perspective stories, and, like, the series is connected to the three women, but I feel like it might have been mentioned, like, when she meets up with her besties. I'm pretty sure we're just trying to, like, catch a bug. All right, let me see. What are the main guy's names in the other two books? Uh, okay, Jamar. Jamar is the main guy in the dating playbook, and Daniel is the main guy in the boyfriend project. I will probably forget their names in like an hour, but whatever. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I'm a little, I'm close to halfway through. I'll probably settle down and read some more today. Hopefully, I'm not gonna stay outside because it is very humid and 
humidity is a migraine trigger for me. I'm only out here because I was taking photos for this vlog. <laughs> And I decided to do a quick little update, but yeah, I'm gonna grab my iced coffee and go back inside and uh, cool down. Is it too hot even for you? Okay, so I finished this um, about a day ago. <sighs> absolutely loved it i gave it five stars this is such a compulsive read like you just want to get back to the story get back to the characters i loved 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 there was no third act breakup did you hear me right i'll say it again there was no third act and i think what i'm noticing right with books i don't have a third act breakup it's because their characters are usually fully fleshed out characters aside from their romance that have other issues and other things going on in their life and so the romance doesn't need to like fall apart and implode for us to have that sense of like oh no oh no what's gonna happen like there's already some point of tension outside of the relationship because that's that's real life like you can be in a relationship but life is going to throw anything and everything at you and you're going to have to overcome those obstacles and sometimes your partner helps with that sometimes they can't help with that but I mean I loved this and I it's so nice to see that this author is just getting better I can't remember what I rated um the dating playbook yeah I can't remember what I rated the dating playbook which is the second book in the boyfriend project series I feel like it was maybe four and a half if not five stars I feel like it was four and a half stars I don't know I know it was more than four so this writer is obviously getting better better and better and it's it's nice to see all right y'all so our last book for this vlog is not the plan by gia d cadden cadenet gia d cadenet and i actually started this last night i got to page i think i feel like i want to say i got to the third chapter okay yeah i got to page 19 in this one so what is this about it's also like super short so i appreciate that the shortest book is the last book but basically an ambitious chief of staff risks her career in her heart when she falls hard for her new colleague in this steamy workplace romance from the author of getting his game back after nearly a decade in state politics isadora maris is damn good at her job Aggressive lobbyists and stonewalling senators are no match for her diplomacy and unflappable commitment to her principles. If all goes according to her meticulous plan, she'll soon be managing her boss's successful campaign for U.S. representative and finally land her dream role. Congressional aide in Washington, D.C. She can really make a difference. But Isadora's cool professionalism is knocked off kilter when she meets Karim Sarda. Karim is gorgeous and brilliant and seems to share many of Isadora's ideals. So why is working... So why is he working for the California Senate's most detestable scumbag? Given their boss's fierce political rivalry, Isadora knows that she can't tarnish her reputation by flirting with the enemy, and she's been betrayed enough to want to keep people at a distance. So she deems Karim off-limits, no matter how flustered she feels whenever he enters. Karim knows that struggle all too well. Still processing the wounds from his failed marriage, he's ready for a fresh start but he can't hide his attraction to Isadora's commanding presence. Her strength is captivating, even as he recognizes something fragile beneath its surface. When Karim and Isadora succumb to their undeniable chemistry, their initial desire blossoms into something more, something real. But if Karim's boss takes control of the California Senate, everything Isadora has worked for could be destroyed. Will workplace politics shatter their chance at love? So we have like a forbidden element to this. It's not really a workplace romance, but essentially they work in the same field that interact with each other for work. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
Hello, so I am 50 pages into Not The Plan. I'm on page 50 and nothing calls me back to this book. I'll be very honest. It has been days since I last updated this vlog. I don't know, it's not necessarily bad, but it's not captivating. So what I'm gonna do right now, my mom, well my mom, <laughs> full disclosure about where I'm why I'm wearing a bucket hat even though I oh it's on crooked boom there we go I didn't think I was a bucket hat girly but I'm kind of feeling it but basically I'm wearing a bucket hat indoors because my mom is actually doing my hair right now but she had to take my dad to an appointment so while she is off doing wifely things I am going to attempt to read at least 50 pages of this. It's a short one. I really thought that leaving the shortest book to the end of the vlog was perfect because I'd fly through it and I'd have all this momentum. And I had a bunch of momentum, but this so far has not been worthy of the momentum. So I am going to attempt to read. I think, okay, actually first, I'm gonna bring my tabs over because I've been reading it on my Kindle. And maybe this is one where I need to physically see my progress. I don't know. I could be making that up, but I'll, I'm going to bring the tabs over from, well, I'll bring my annotations from my Kindle into the physical book and tab it. And I will watch some booktube. Maybe watching other people talk about books they're reading will encourage me to pick up this book and read it. All right. I am on page 120 and I am so bored. Nothing pulls me back to this book besides the fact that I'm reading it for a video. And I'm tempted to DNF. I'm really tempted to DNF, but I already DNF'd a book in this video. Which, to be fair, I think I got to around the same point. So if I'm on page 120 in this book and it's only 300 pages, what is that, like 40% kind of? Hold on, let me, let me do some quick math. And by me, I mean my computer. Yeah, I'm at 40%. I'm at 40%. And I've gotten further in this book than I got in The Neighbor Favor. And I decided to DNF it. And it's not bad. It's just, it's mid. Like, and <laughs> yeah, it, it's mid. It really is just middle of the road, boring. And it has its cute moments, but nothing is pulling me back to this. Like, with The Love Con and with the hookup plan, I was pulled back to both of those books. I wanted to finish them. I was invested in the relationships. I really hope that doesn't fall. I was invested in the relationships and I don't see this being anything more than a three stars. Not that three stars is bad, but I'm bored. I'm really bored. So I think I'm going to call it. And it sucks because the first book of this video was a DNF. The last book of the video is a DNF. And then the middle two <laughs> books were absolute perfection. So I guess it was like a weird DNF five star sandwich that we have going on. Let me get the rest of the books so that I can do a quick little wrap up. Mm. Yeah, let me see what I did there. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Come on. Sure, you're a cat. So here are our four books, right? Which honestly makes such a lovely, lovely photo. We started out with The Neighbor Favor. And we DNF'd The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. The male main character, Nick. Yep, Nick, loser, coward. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I just, I was not convinced of the potential of the relationship they were on uneven footing from the beginning and i truly just i could not see myself at all rooting for this relationship and i got to 33 percent before i decided that this simply was not for me this will be up in my pingo book storefront if you want to give it a gander but do not want to pay full price for it next up i picked up and finished The Love Con by Sericea Glass. I gave this five stars. I absolutely loved it. The friendship was real. The fake dating was 
incredible and it made sense and their slide from best friendship into relationship was believable. I also loved and appreciated the character growth in our female main character Kenya and also just the whole backdrop of it being a cosplay competition was just icing on the cake. Then our third book was The Hookup Plan by Farah Roshan. This is another one that I gave five stars. Excellent complex character work outside of the relationship. They're um, kind of friends with, well, pseudo enemies to friends with benefits to lovers was fun and what I really appreciated about it is that this is definitely a story where the guy falls first and Drew was totally open about it with our main character London and it was just it was a great time. Also neither of these have a third act breakup. There is some other obstacle or roadblock that adds tension to the story so it's not just their relationship and then your conflict is like some weird thing that causes them to break up. It doesn't make any sense. There's something else in both of these where you're like, okay, how is that going to cause tension? And it's done really well in both of these. And then I picked up and will not be finishing at 40%, Not the Plan by Gia D. Cadenet. Honestly, there's nothing inherently wrong with this one. It simply, to me, was boring. This is another one where it will be in my Pango book storefront, so if you want to pick it up but do not want to pay the full price, then go ahead and do that. And I'll just plug that once again, so both of these will be up in my Pango book storefront. They are essentially in excellent condition, barely read, and yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm looking forward to doing another round of reading BIPOC romances um, hopefully within the next month or so. Look out for that. Make sure to like, comment, and share. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you're notified every time I put out a new video. Check out my Patreon if you want to join as well as my Etsy shop and my Pango book storefront and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Showing. I ain't living for the moment. I see what's mine and I want it. Hungry like a Pac Man. I'm Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm Naruto with a Hanzo. Got a sharp mind like I'm Einstein. Put some copyright, so it's all mine. Check it for me, I'm in the sky.